So in this video, we're going to introduce scientific notation. Uh, many of you may be familiar with it, and maybe after you see it, you'll think, oh, yeah, I think I remember this from seventh grade. All right. So a number is in scientific notation, fancy, when it is written in the form. What is that form? It is a number, A, multiplied by 10 raised to some integer power n, where a is an absolute value stuck between net, uh, one and um, less than 10. So, you know, that's a little bit wonky right there. So that's a wonky, right? Hope that doesn't mean something bad. All right. So let me show you on a number line what this is. So it's like zeros in the middle, 1, 2, da, 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 10, 11, right? Over here we've got negative 1, negative 2, da, 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 uh, negative 10, negative 11, you know, some, something like this, okay? So where does this fall, okay? This is going to be values that are one or bigger, but also less than 10, and then negative one or smaller, but less than negative 10. So the way we do this is we have a parentheses on this side, and we have a bracket on this side to indicate that it includes the one and the negative one, but we don't include the 10. So basically, it's like all single digit numbers that are greater than the absolute value of 1. Or, uh, yeah, and less than 10, right? So, so all single digit numbers um, that are greater than or equal to 1, okay? and less than or equal to 10. But then also, all these digits are less than or equal to negative one, but greater than that negative 10 there. So this is kind of where these numbers live in. So like you could have like five um, times 10 to the three, okay? You could have like 3.213, times 10 to the 7, okay? What you cannot have is like 15.2 times 10 to the 3. Why can you not have that? This number is now bigger than 10 right there, okay? So that does not work, all right? Your number here needs to be less than 10, okay? Or greater than negative 10. So we can't be over here and we can't be in there. Okay, so maybe that makes sense. So let's just do some converting. So let's convert, all right? So from standard notation, to scientific notation, okay? So standard notation, so maybe I've got like 41,350, okay? And I wanna convert this number to scientific. So how do I do that? Well, all I do is I move the decimal place. I move it until I only have, until I have a number that satisfies it's in this interval here. Okay, so I move it here. Uh-oh, move it here. One, two, three, four times. If I move it to right there, now all of a sudden, I get 4.135. And I don't need to put that zero there, okay? Now, how 
would I multiply? What would I need to multiply by to get back to this original 43,000 or 41,350? What would I need to multiply by? Well, I need to multiply by a number bigger, right, than one. So it's 10 raised to what power? Well, how many places I go over? One, two, three, four. Four decimals. That equates to 10 raised to the fourth power. So I put a four right in there, okay? Now, sometimes your calculator gets a little wonky. So the calculator, if you ever seen this like this, four let me do like a calculator type so four one three five yeah look at that calculator and then it's an e and then it says like four here so what this is saying is it's saying this number here 4.135 times 10 raised to the positive four. That's what your calculator is saying, but it can't write it in this format here. So if you're on the test and you write it like this, that is going to be counted wrong. If you write it like this, you get it right. Okay, so that is what we are looking. Wow, right? That's what we're looking for. Okay. All right, so let's... Uh, Let's try another one, okay? So instead of doing something that's really big, you know, let's do something that's really small, like maybe 0 0.000365. So I wanna convert this to scientific notation. I need, I can't have a number that's too small. It can't be, you know, really close to zero, right? So how do I handle that? I need to move the decimal place. How far do I move it? One, two, three, four. If I move it over here, so that gets me four places. Now, what's happening here? I moved it instead of moving it to the left, I moved it to the right. Now, four decimal places to the right, that's 10 to the negative four, okay? So it's 3.65 times 10 to the negative four. And if you think about why this makes sense, okay, 10, or 10 raised to the negative four is, say, is the same as one, the reciprocal, one over 10 to the fourth. So if you take 3.65 and you divide by 10 raised to the fourth, which is one, two, three, four zeros, okay, you're gonna get 3.65 divided by 10,000. And so that gets you what you originally had, 0 0.000365. So it still works the same, still works the same way. Um, you're just going at it a little bit differently, okay? So, um, Let's try, let's, let's try another one. Instead, let's now go from scientific to standard. So if I go from scientific to standard, what's gonna happen here? So let's take, you know, 6.52 times 10 to the three, okay? Now 10 to the three, if I multiply something by 10 to the three, that's like multiplying times a thousand, okay? 10 to the three is a thousand. If I multiply by a really big number, that's gonna make me a big number, okay? So this number, how are we gonna do it? Well, this exponent tells us how many decimal places to move. So how many places do I move the 6.52? I move it one, two, three. I have this, and so I have my dot moved over there. So that, uh-oh. And so that gets me 6,520. 6,520, right there. Okay? <clears throat> now let's try another one. Let's throw in a negative this time, see if we can't just mess everything up. 
Okay, so negative 6.0055 multiplied by 10 to the, heck, why not, negative 2. Okay, now if 10 to the positive exponent gets you a bigger number, 10 to the negative exponent gets you a smaller number, right? So which way are we going to move our decimal now? Instead of moving it to the right to make it bigger, I'm going to move it to the left, just like this. How many times? Two times. So what does this become? This negative 6.0055. I move it one, two, just like that. So I'm gonna put my zeros in. And so this number is point zero. And do I put a negative right there? No, that negative comes out front. And then 60055, just like that. So if the negative is tripping you up here, all you gotta do to take care of that negative is just set it over to the side and then treat it like you would a positive. Okay, so if that negative's really bugging you, just set it over to the side. You don't have to, you can treat that as a multiplying by a negative one. <clears throat> and then you just work it from here, okay? And if you think about this, this is like writing 6.0055 divided by, now that 10 to the two there, divided by basically 100. And so that's why you move your decimal over twice, okay? So, and you can do this exactly in your calculator if you want to, okay? So I could type this into my calculator. So let's just try it, see what happens. So if I type in negative 6.0055 times 10 raised to the negative 2 and hit enter, see, I get that answer right there, negative Point zero six zero zero five five, okay. Now, you know the question might be, why even bother with scientific notation, right? So, science, right? So, why is it useful when you're talking about like really, really big numbers, really big numbers? Okay, maybe I'm talking about like distance. To the sun wow the yellow one is the sun right okay that's like 93 million miles okay that's a lot that's a lot of miles that's even more feet right so 93 million so 93 million I think I got it, okay? And maybe I wanted to know how many feet it was. I multiplied that by 5,280. Holy cow, look how big that number is. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros, and then 49104. So that's 49104 and then seven zeros. Oh my goodness. So that would be totally annoying to write out. So what you might do instead is write it in scientific notation. And this would be 4.9104 times 10 to the, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I hope I counted that right. If I didn't, oh well. <laughs> but you see how much better that would be and then just think if this was like a really big number, like, you know, this could be just the beginning of it, right? So you could have a scenario where you're looking at numbers like this out in space, and then that just gets crazy, right? Crazy. So scientific notation is really good for big numbers, but it's also good for small numbers. So small numbers, like the size of an atom. What? The size of an atom is so itty bitty, okay? So, uh, you know, maybe it's like the mass of an electron. 
you know, like 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. So that means there's like 31 zeros. Oh, 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 oh. You know, and then you do that five times, right? It's like, oh my gosh, that is insane, okay? And so instead of writing that out, you can write it quickly like this. So that's where um, having scientific notation really becomes helpful for us. So last thing I want to do, I want to multiply and divide with uh, expressions that are already represented in scientific. And we'll just write them out. So like 3.2 times 10 to the 7, 5 times 10 to the negative 4, and then 2 times 10 to the negative 10, okay? So if I multiply all this stuff out here, well, um, I like to just multiply my numbers together first. It doesn't really matter the order in which you multiply. You think about it, 3 times 2 times 4, that's equal to 6 and then 4 is 24, right? That's the same as doing 3 times 4 times 2. That'd be 12, and then 2 is 24. Or 2 times 3 times 4, which is 6 and then 24. So the order in which you multiply doesn't matter. So I can multiply these three numbers. So 3.2 times 5 times 2. And then I can multiply all these tens together. The good thing about multiplying things that have the same base what do you do with the same base? Well, we gotta think back to properties of exponents. Same base, we add the exponents. So I have a seven, I have a negative four. So technically I'm adding a negative four and then I add a negative 10. Okay, so what is this equal to? So 3.2, ooh, five and two make another 10. So technically, I could just throw that away. This becomes another, that's a 10 to the one there. So this is 3.2 times 10 to the seven, minus four, minus 10, plus one from that five times two right there. Getting a little tricky. And so then it's 3.2 times 10 raised to the, well, I got minus 14 plus eight, that's minus six, minus, Wait a second, <clears throat> 14, what have I done here? I messed, I messed something up, didn't I? Okay, minus six. All right, so if I multiply this out, I got 3.2, I'm gonna move it. Now this makes it a really small negative, okay? That's really small number. Positive exponent is a really big number, so it's gonna be really small, so I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So zero point zero 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 three two. Okay. And that's the answer. Alright. Now if you type that in your calculator, maybe it'll work. Let's see. Parentheses three point two times ten raised to the seven okay close parentheses open parentheses five times ten raised to the negative four close parentheses times two times ten raised to the negative ten close parentheses enter Oh, look, it gave me that E thing. So 3.2 E to the negative 6. So 3.2 E to the negative 6. Do not write that. Don't write it, okay? This means that right there. So this is what you're looking for. So if you use your calculator, make sure not to fall into that E trap, okay? Last one, division here. 4.6 times 10 to the 12. And then 9 times 10 to the 3. And then 1.5 times 10 to the 8. 
and 2.3 times 10 to the negative 5. If I multiply this all out here, well, it looks like I can use some algebra here. Um, 4.6 and 2.3, that's double what that is there. So that's 2 and that's 1. 9 divided by 3 halves, hmm, that's going to be, uh, let's see, 2 of those make 3. So that's 6. I think that's 6. I think it goes into it 6 times. Okay. And so then what's that leave me with? That leaves me with 18 times 10 to the 12 times 10 to the 3 over 10 to the 8 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, the 8 cancels with this 10 here. That leaves 10 to the 4th. Now this negative comes up to the top, so that's 18, and then I have 10 to the 4 times 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 5. So that's 18 times 10 to the 3, 5, and 4 make, so that's 12 right there. So, uh-oh, what have I done? I've done, I've done something wrong. So 9 divided by 1.5, what is that? 9 divided by 1.5, that's 6. Okay, now... 6 times 2, oh my goodness, 6 times 2, is that 18? Come on now, come on now, that is 12, okay, so this number, this is actually 12 right here, look at that, look at that, so what do I have here, I've got um, 12 and then 12 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that is a big, big number. Okay? All right, hopefully this video um, helped you out. Now, if you were asked to write this in scientific notation, uh, sometimes they're going to give you a number... You know, they'll give you a box, and they'll say times, and then they'll have a 10, and then they'll have another box. And your job is just to put that number that represents this number into those boxes there. So how would I do that? Well, I know this number, A, has got to be between um, the, you know, that 1 is greater, you know, great, less than or equal to that absolute value of A less than 10, right? So this needs to be the 1.2 that goes in. So if I move the decimal all the way to right there, that's the 1.2 that goes in. And how far I moved it, well, that's 3, 6, 9, 12, 13. So I moved it 13 places to get over it to that 1.2. Okay, so this is what the answer would be. You type the 1.2 in that box and you type the 13 into that box right there, okay? So hopefully that kind of helps you out with your uh, online homework if you have to do something like that. All right, good luck with uh, scientific notation.